started. And then three seconds later, every dog in the neighborhood was howling. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So that was Conan in a nutshell. I, I know it's a little strange. Thank you for putting up with me dragging you across the street and back again. I, I know that's a little odd. Uh, but as Alessandro pointed out, if we had done that in here, it would have been deafening. So I chose not to deafen all of you. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like the piece I did earlier today, which was a Sami Yoik, um, cooling is, is a means of communication. It's a means of communication between the girls who are out, on the, uh, out herding, uh, that drive their herds up into the mountains during the spring and summer months, up to what's called the Febod, and it's uh, basically a mountain village that they all live in. It is almost entirely women up there because apparently we don't want to let the young men running around with the livestock by themselves all <laughs> spring. So it's the ladies that go up and do this. And they would drive their herds, I, either they drive them themselves out into the hills or they coon them out into the hills. So the cows and the sheep and the goats will learn a cooing that says it's time to go out now and then they will learn the cooing that says it's time to come back in. So they don't necessarily have to actually go with their herds, but oftentimes they would. And that's where the herdy tunes come in. So you're out there bored, what do you do? You sing. So they do, and they make up all these little tunes. So this means of communication is for these girls who are out there on the hills by themselves with their herds that need to be able to communicate to the other girl who's on the other mountain three kilometers away. And how do you do that? Well, sound carries very well, but especially carries very well at high pitch. So. The ladies would cool into one another back and forth. Sometimes it was just a means of uh, entertainment for themselves. Sometimes it might be a means of uh, saying, hey, I, I'm in distress, I need help. Um, sometimes it's as we just did, I lost my cow, don't worry, I found your cow. Um, and so they have these uh, phrases that are well-known phrases that they could cool into one another. Um, also though, to signal other families that say, hey, all our cows are home, everything is good. Okay, great. Um, it is also a means of communication between you and your herd as well, as I said. So you can send your herd out, bring your herd back in. Um, at times you can actually get a single cow to understand that this cooling is their cooling, and so they will come when you call them. Um, I'm gonna imagine that's probably gonna take a lot of repetition before mm -hmm. they learn that. Um, it is also a means of while you are out in the woods, by yourself uh, for scaring away predators. So A, that high pitch is probably going to be a little freaky to them, just give me a sec. And B, uh, a lot of times they would make animal noises such as barking and things like that um, to make it sound like there's dogs around to try and scare away some of the predators that would be around. Um, so it is mainly a, a means of communication. It is also, however, a beautiful means of singing as well. Uh, I know it's a little different. <laughs> um, I know some people are going to go, really? Okay. Um, but I really quite enjoyed it, so I wanted to present that to you. Yes? Just me too. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you were asking me a question. Um, uh, as I said earlier, too, it's very similar to yoiking to a certain degree, which is that piece I did earlier today. Uh, it has a lot of similarities to yodeling as well, uh, which would be the Swiss, Swiss Kirk, um, um equivalent of this. And they're all meant for do the same thing, to communicate from one uh, herd person to another herding person. This is one of the oldest means of, of singing in the world, is, is pastoral music and singing from shepherd music, um, to keep, keep communications between one another. Um, and so yeah, so yodeling is, is very similar. Uh, probably more similar actually th to this than to yoiking, and uh, yeah. Anyway, but uh, if you missed the Yoiking piece earlier, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, does anyone have any questions for me? Um, can you better orient me in with this in like a right, place I got it, Sweden? Um, time period, can you orient me a little bit? So time period is a hard one to peg in this because pastoral music and singing between herding has been going on since the dawn of time. Uh, as long as there's been people herding uh, sheep, for instance, 
they had to have some sort of means of communication. So it's hard to pinpoint that they started doing filming in Sweden on this date or any of that kind of thing. Um, but as I've talked to my documentation, there is uh, there are uh, not extant, but there are mentions in things like the sagas of um, high pitched singing, particularly from the Sami, which is again harks back to my yoiking piece earlier, um, where they talk about this high pitched singing that these particular areas used to uh, do, uh, particularly in the Sweden and Swedish and Finnish areas. So. Um, that's probably the closest I'm going to get you to a period is that mentions in the saga, but they don't necessarily mean exactly this. So mm -hmm. I can't, can't tell you them exactly when. Physically, how is it different from Yodel? You do a little bit of a description here, which I think I understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, for, for a female, I don't have the same sort of uh, falsetto tone that, say, Leaf in the back would have. Um, so they have a much different, uh, easier time with that whole flipping between yeah. high I, and low. And I yoga. Have, I've, I've tried pulling with a male voice. It's really freaking hard. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> there are some, some men who can do it, um, but it's high. It's high pitched. Um, mm -hmm. And if for a man to, tr to try and get up to those pitches, it's mm -hmm. going to be pretty hard. Um, yodeling is not the topic of this piece, but um, singing wise, they're fairly similar, except for that whole flipping between the falsetto voice, which I don't do. Um, although I did do it out there, but that was accidental. Um, uh, um, as far as singing versus singing, as far as singing, singing yeah. Okay, so the the cooning voice, as opposed to a uh, classically trained voice, uh, cooning voice is all right up in here. It's all in the front of your face, and it's very uh, harsh. Uh, a lot of the times there's an e sound that's right up here. It's a very different singing style than I'm used to, uh, which is why my voice teacher would be crapping <laughs> right now. She would be so upset with me. Um, but it's, again, it's all up here in the face. And yoiking <coughs> is much the same, except that the yoiking is more in the throat, but also in the front of the face, as opposed to a classically trained voice where I'm used to using everything all at once. This is all here. Um, so that was something that took me a very long time, actually, to, to, to train myself out of the classical voice and get into there, because that was foreign uh, to me. And in actuality, I, I will let you in on a little secret. The little signal I did to her right at the very beginning when I barked at her, that was actually to get my voice into the right spot, because otherwise I automatically go to classical voice, and I cannot do this in classical voice. You can't do it. So as soon as I do that, that gets me right in the right spot. Um, and so that was actually why I did that, but it was more to signal her too, so uh, it worked. Gave me the same excuse. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I had to have a reason to, so you're not all standing there going, why is she barking at us? <laughs> right, so, uh, but that for me, it just is a very natural way to get me into that proper tone, uh, as opposed to the classical voice. So, cause I, could, I mean, I could sing those tones in a classical voice, but if that, in the front of your face, it would rip my throat right out, so. Now you've got you mentioned basic simple instruments. Uh, is that in case your throat goes out? Uh, sure, I <laughs> yoiking or not yoiking. Sorry, tuning. Uh, the surmise came from actually from uh, playing the. You're just looking at it right now. The mm -hmm. book horn right there. Um, mm -hmm. And it's an instrument that uh, very much sounds very much like the same kind of tone that um, the tuning girls have. So I think they started imitating this horn um, and doing the calling without the horn. Um, but yeah, they did have some simple instruments. Again, they cow horns and sheep horns and goat horns and so on and so forth. And the lure there, which is a birch bark or willow bark horn as well. And then they also had some things like this little guy here or small pipes and things like that. Um, yes? Um, we talked about the instruments. Uh, with your first piece, I remember thinking that uh, the neat skill they have when you need your bag packs at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they did have a few simple instruments, anything that was small and portable that they could take with them. Um, but yeah, and the lure in particular is quite a loud instrument, so it's a good, it's kind of like the elbow horn sort of thing, except that it's long like a big trumpet and that kind of thing. Is that loud, what you're, what you're, this this is just a, uh, it's actually a Jorvik pan flute, and it's not particularly loud. 
Oh. Also, I can't play it. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I would care. I think they would carry just small things around with them that they can carry easily in their light and portable. Because I know I don't want to have to carry around a tuba if I'm hooking through the mountains. Right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, and I didn't ever see any um, mentions of them having any drums or anything like that. I did see at one point in time somebody saying they had bells, like as in jingle bells kind of thing, because they make noise when you walk. Kind of the same reason why you put bells on your on your goats and things like that. Um, so yeah. Little, little bits of instruments. They keep predators away as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Their, their yeah. So. yeah. What about, do you have a sense of, is it likely that they're doing a certain type of thing in one region or valley and, you know, regional variants a lot? <coughs> Certainly. Um, Dalarna in Sweden is probably the main region where this is still going on now. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other regions, but they're all, it's a fairly small section of Sweden where this is a thing. Um, now, in Norway, they also have a, sim a similar type of singing, too, um, called lolling. Um, it's very similar, slightly different. It's hard to describe what the difference is unless you hear it, uh, and I can't do the lolling thing right now. Mm -hmm. um, but regionally, I don't know amongst the, the, sim the other regions if it's much different, but it certainly is a small area of Sweden where this is still happening. Okay. For example, the call, the answer I did is from Delarna. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Delarna is, pre is the place where it's it's still most prevalent is that region. And a lot of the herding tunes and uh, yoik tunes, or no, I say yoik tunes, I keep saying yoik, cooling tunes that I've heard mostly came from the Delarna <coughs> region, so. Thank you. <laughs> is there any other questions? Um, on the, the music, the instrument versus your voice, would the tunes be somewhat similar? I would imagine, again, if they're, they're trying to imitate that horn sound, the horn itself only has like three holes on it. It's only going to have certain tones that it plays. Uh, and cloning is much the same. There is a mode that they use. Um, it's in my documentation where uh, it's certain, certain notes are the most prevalently used notes, right? And again, it harkens back to the horn. It's going to have only certain notes that it can play and overtones and so on and so forth. Um, so I, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? What's the time? Uh, 25 minutes. And we started five minutes early, so hey, we're right on time. <laughs> um, so I just spoke to the event staff, yeah. and uh, they were able to talk to the fellow um, on, on all of our behalf and, and okay. apologize. And um, the reason he came over there was a service going on. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, I mean, who knew, right? right. Like we, I could look over and I didn't see anything. I didn't see but, yeah, yeah. but so um, they were able to talk to him and just okay. um, Thank calm. you so much. Oh, no, no I, I just wanted to check in on that That's and let good. everyone know that it's, I, I, would deal, I would turn this as taken care of, so don't worry. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Majesty. If there's no further questions, I'm going to go get tea. Yay! Yay!